A very good evening to all of you. I am going to discuss GIS data capturing techniques and integration of remote sensing and GIS in brief. The power of a GIS comes from the ability to relate different information in a spatial context and to reach a conclusion about the relationship. Most of the information we have about our world contains a, a, a location reference. Placing that information at some point on the globe. A GIS which can use information from many different sources in many different forms can help with various analysis. The primary requirement for the source data involves knowledge of location for the variables. The data sources for data acquisitions should be carefully selected for specific purposes. The data sources for GIS can be categorized as conventional analog map sources, aerial remote sensing, satellite remote sensing, field data sources, for example, surveying for attribute and GNSS, reports and publications, and existing digital map sources. Topographic maps with contours and other terrain features, cadastral maps and thematic maps with respect to defined object classes are digitized by digitizers manually or by scanners. Although Analog maps contain several problems like lack of availability, being out of date, inconsistency in map production time, inconsistence of map scale or projection, inaccuracy, etc. But these maps are still very useful data sources for GIS projects, especially in low cost GIS projects where high costs prohibit the use of current high resolution remotely sensed data. Aerial remote sensing or aerial photography was the first widely used method of remote sensing. It is the technique of capturing imageries from some air platform. These images are used for obtaining information about object, area, or phenomenon. These data are used in GIS as a background for other data to provide a spatial context to those data and to aid interpretation. Alternatively, the user may extract information on land use, vegetation type, or any other aspects of landscape from the aerial remote sensing data. Three-dimensional information about the earth surface can also be obtained from aerial remote sensing using hmm, classic uh, photogrammetric techniques. Other than the stated classic aerial photogrammetric techniques, Aerial remote sensing is now widely being used for hyperspectral, thermal, and LiDAR data collection from the aeroplanes. Drones are a new addition in remote sensing that can be used to capture optical, thermal, and LiDAR data from a low altitude and thus with greater level of detail. Needless to say, that LiDAR can provide 3D point cloud that is perhaps uh, the most advanced data included in GIS. 3D point cloud can also be created by traditional photogrammetry and by processing the optical drone images. Satellite images are collected by sensors on board a satellite 
and then relate to the earth as a series of electronic signals which are processed by a computer to produce an image. Satellite remote sensing has the ability to provide complete cost-effective, repetitive, spatial and temporal data coverage, which means that various phenomena can be analyzed synoptically. And such tasks as the assessment and monitoring of land condition can be carried out over large regions. With the advent of high resolution satellite born sensors, satellite images can also be used for mapping earth surface features in a great detail. The 3D information about the earth surface can also be obtained from satellite imageries using photogrammetry or radar grammetry techniques. There are, several, there are several methods of collecting raw data in the field uh, for direct input into GIS. These are most often used wh uh, when the required data do not exist or any, uh, or, uh, any other readily available format such as conventional map or remotely sensed imagery. Traditional manual surveying techniques using chains, plane tables, levels, and theodolites are example for, examples for direct field measurement. Modern digital equivalents of these manual techniques have been adopted so that data collected and stored in uh, data are collected in stored uh, in digital format which are ready for direct input into GIS. Examples include uh, total stations and uh, handheld laser range finders. Apart from this, global navigation systems or GNSS are also used for field data collection. The GNSS involve satellites, ground stations and user equipment to determine positions around the world. Various types of attribute data are also surveyed from the field and fed into the GIS. Socioeconomic data are usually listed in the reports of statistics and uh, census with respect to administrative units. These are also known as conventional attribute data. In short, these are the data that can range from unpublished dissertations to published books, for example, census reports, town planning reports, etc. In the recent days, a change occurs in the transformation of data into a GIS database. Originally, most of the spatial data were derived from analog maps and or uh, remotely sensed images. However, a large amount of spatial information is now distributed in digital vector map formats. So, there is a wider use of existing digital map sources. Images or raster maps are widely being used in GIS analysis. Nowadays, significant amounts of open geospatial data are available on the internet. Open data means it is downloadable from an authoritative source for any type of use, reuse and redistribution. Integration of GIS and remote sensing is the final topic I am going to cover. It is not a new concept although remote sensing is much older than GIS. Since its inception, GIS uses remotely sensed images as a major source of data. 
Nowadays, GIS and remote sensing are spoken about in the same breath as they can revolutionize the concept of spatial data analysis and visualization. Combination of data of different types from different sources such as those uh, described earlier is the pinnacle of data integration and analysis in a digital environment where all the data sources are geometrically registered to a common geographic base. The potential for information extraction is extremely wide. This is the concept for analysis within a digital GIS database. The integration with GIS allows a synergistic processing of multi-source spatial data. Any data source which can be referenced spatially can be used in this type of environment. A digital elevation model or digital terrain model is just an example of this kind of data. Other examples could include digital maps of soil type, land cover classes, forest species, road networks, and many others, depending on the application. The results from a classification of remote sensing data set in map format could also be used in a GIS as another data source to update existing map data. Map products derived from remote sensing are usually critical components of a GIS. Remote sensing is an important technique to study both spatial and temporal phenomena and it is used for monitoring. Although the analysis of remotely sensed data uh, one can derive, uh, uh, although the analysis of remote sensing data, one can derive different types of information that can be combined with other spatial data within the GIS. The integration of two technologies creates a synergy in which the GIS improves the ab ability to extract information from remotely sensed data and remote sensing, in turn, keeps the GIS up to date with actual earth surface information. As a result, large amounts of spatial data can now be integrated and analyzed. This allows us for better understanding of environmental processes and better insight into the effect of human activities. The GIS and remote sensing can thus help people arrive at informed decisions about their environment. Like in all models, however, both maps and thematic data are abstractions or simplifications of the complex real world. Thus, it is important to realize the GIS and remote sensing can complement but never completely replace the field observations. Therefore, to conclude, the appropriate approach is to integrate remote sensing, GIS and field observations in a common de denominator so that the maximum possible information can be accumulated and analyzed with maximum possible efficiency and reliability. Thank you for uh, observing my lecture. Thanks a lot.